Hello, my loves. I hope you are healthy. I hope you're finding pockets of happiness. I certainly find little pockets of happiness every morning making my coffee. I don't know what I would do without my coffee. Well, I do. I've gone times without drinking coffee. But oh, how I love my little morning ritual of coffee. Even though I live in downtown Tucson, I try to go outside and connect with a little bit of nature that I have in my backyard as often as possible. I have dreams of living in the forest, but for now, this is where I am, urban. But I can always put my feet on the ground, see my breath in the cold morning air, and enjoy the early morning. When my dad passed away in 2016, I had no idea how little he had. He had no money in his bank account, but he did have an amazing record collection, which I still have now. I'll put on a record sometimes and me and my son, well, dance around. I don't ever remember, I, I can't recall a time of being a little girl where I didn't love to dance. Some of my earliest memories are sitting down adults and making them watch me dance. I started choreographing before I even knew what choreographing was. I've always loved to dance. I started to dance as a child because I couldn't help myself. It just came to me. I just needed to move my body and I wanted people to watch because I thought it was magnificent. Look what my body can do, I thought. Don't you want to see? But in high school, I was in dance classes and my teacher told me that my body was too big to ever be a true dancer. The thing is, I was never looking to be a true dancer, or even a professional dancer. I just danced because I couldn't help it. But after this teacher told me this, something died in me, and I stopped wanting to dance. Luckily, around the same time, I met this woman who was teaching a West African dance class, and she invited 16-year-old me, who had just been told that her body was too big to dance. She could come to her class. I went to that dance class with live drumming and all these people were so happy that I had showed up. They said, welcome, come dance with us. And that started my love for West African dance. For West African dance began because I was told that I belonged, that my, I, was, I was welcome, my body was welcome. And so in 2005 and 2007, I traveled to go study with Yusuf Kumbasa and Mustafa Bengora. I went and I danced and I danced and people were happy to dance with me. I sang and I danced and it wasn't because I wanted to perform, it was because I couldn't help but not dance.
O dia bizarro. O dia bizarro. Hello, hello, hello. How y'all doing? How you feeling? Thank you. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for the gift of your attention watching this video this far. And I, I often feel like we go through things together. Um, and so like this week, I was going through a lot of, I've been running now, this is my second week of running, five days in a row. I've been reconnecting with my body in new ways because I finally feel safe too. I had to stop movement altogether for a while because I only used to move. I got to a point where I was only moving for the sake of being thin, which was very disordered. And so instead, I just paused everything. I took some time. I stopped dancing, I stopped running. I kept walking, um, but yeah, I needed to pause. But this week I went to a dance class, which I hadn't been to in a very long time. And like I said before, I've been dancing since, since some of my first thoughts are dancing. And I would make up these dances. I didn't even know it was called choreography. And I would sit all the adults down and I'd make them watch my dance creations. And I just was like, isn't this amazing? Aren't I amazing in this body? I hadn't yet learned how to hate and judge and yeah, judge whether my movement was good or bad or... <sighs> I just moved and thought it was magnificent because I thought movement was magnificent. I loved watching other people dance. And slowly but surely, my culture trained me that my body was wrong for dancing. So I work with thousands and thousands of women with photography, body image. I call it body positive photography art. Um, I do ceremonies with women about body image. And I get so many stories from women whose love for dance at one point or another in their life was hijacked from them. And this is a really common narrative. And I used to teach dance class. I taught dance for about 10 years and people would walk in often just panicked and like so afraid to go to a dance class because they felt so much shame around movement, around not being a dancer. So our culture has really lost the sacredness, the healing properties, the mm, just dancing because you don't, you can't help yourself like we did when we were younger. And my particular story is I fell in love with dance. I used to have, I, I lived, I grew up in the jungle, in, a, in this jungle in Mexico, and we had no electricity, but I had a Walkman that my dad had got me, and I had one cassette tape, and it was Madonna, and I would just dance to Madonna, and, um, but in school in Mexico, I joined Floclorico dancing, which is traditional, with big skirts, beautiful, beautiful. We got to perform for the whole village and I loved it. But then I came to Tucson to go to high school and I started taking modern dance and choreographing and performing. And it was during those years, my high school years, with different, I was studying with different teachers and just loving it. I had my dance friends and we were just so passionate about choreographing dances. And at one point a teacher told me um, and again, this isn't, this isn't a teacher trying to be mean. This is someone whose heart had been broken already by our culture and told she wasn't good enough. Therefore, she told me that my body wasn't a dance body, that I would never get anywhere as a dancer because I'm, I'm too big. And it just, it broke my heart. Here I was thinking that my body was an expression of me. And I, in that moment, I realized, oh, do people think my body isn't correct for dancing? And I started to withdraw and I, I didn't want to dance anymore. 
but luckily around that same time, I was 16, 15 or 16, I met this woman whose father was from West Africa and she taught, she grew up in New York. She taught West African dance here in Tucson and she invited me to one of her dance classes. I mean, the serendipity of the timing was pretty amazing. And I went to one of her dance classes and I walked, it was a Saturday, it was a Saturday morning and I walked in nervous, like not knowing what to expect, but just like, I just wanted to dance. Was this a place I could just come dance? And I was the youngest person there and everyone welcomed me. They were so happy I had come, welcome, come dance with us. And they started live drumming and she was teaching us moves. And I said, this is it. I can dance here. I'm welcomed here. I'm safe here. My body is accepted here. I can dance as myself here. And so then my love for West African dance just exploded. And by the time I was 25, I had no money. I was living in Taos, New Mexico. I was a body worker. I did massage therapy back then. And I had no money. I had a car that barely could make it 25 miles. It was always breaking down. I had nothing. But I knew I had to go study with one of my favorite teachers of West African dance, Yusuf Kumbasa. So I did all this fundraising. I made it happen. I manifested my first trip to West Africa, to Guinea, West Africa. And I got myself, my 25 year old self, to Guinea, West Africa to study for a whole month West African dance. And then I got to go again in 2007 with my teacher, Mustafa Bengora. And oh, it was medicine. And see, in West Africa, the dancing came from ancestral lineages for healing, for living. Dance was something you did to celebrate, to remember that you're alive. It's not this thing judged for only certain people to do. Certain people with certain body types as we do in our culture. In our culture, we believe that only certain people with certain body types should be dancing. Yes, we do. But West Africa, I saw the ceremony of dance and that's, that's what I've always had wanted. And then I came back to America and I was teaching and I was bringing teachers from West Africa. I was very involved and I loved it. But slowly but surely as my I was in a relationship that uh, my partner broke up with me because I had become too fat. And around that same, and I, around that same time, I developed a bit of a disordered eating and disordered exercise. And I started bringing in that disordered view of my body into my teaching of West African dance. And slowly but surely, I started not liking West African dance. I wondered if I looked correct do people think I looked good enough to be a dance teacher? Was my body too big? Was I wrong? And my monkey mind took over and I started not liking dancing. I, I even had a dance studio at one point. I opened a dance studio, which is also my photography studio. And I had all these other teachers. It was very successful in downtown Tucson. And, but my love got hijacked by my thoughts about how my body looked again. So I had to take a pause. I gave my yoga, my yoga dance and photography studio to my friend who was a teacher there. I just gave it to him because I needed to walk away. And yeah, I had a, I, that was the time that I started really going deep and um, reassessing my relationship with food, reassessing my relationship with movement, reassessing my relationship with dance again. And slowly but surely, I have, I have found my love for dance and I'm still finding it. But what I know for sure is that for me, it is a way like of meditation, of being present, of connecting with my son, of connecting with community, of just letting this body move, letting her move. Just like when she was a little girl she just wanted to move because she couldn't help it. She couldn't not move. 
that's what I'm searching for again and it's coming and this week I got to go to a West African dance class taught by my friend Jennifer Eldred and live drumming and I hadn't been I hadn't been to a class in years and I had seen so many people in years and felt like homecoming and felt a little foreign my body's older and stiffer <laughs> but I'm so grateful so grateful for that lineage of dance from West Africa that allowed me to connect to the medicine of movement that continues to allow me to remember the medicine of movement. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this here today is because I've talked to thousands, thousands of women at this point. I've been doing body positive photography for 10 years. I've given talks all over the world. I've connected with so many people at this point. And so I've heard so many stories and I've heard way too many stories of people saying that their joy for dance was hijacked by them feeling like their body wasn't good enough. And that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart that we stop doing things we love because we believe our bodies aren't correct. And so I'm here to show you that you can dance in any body, even if you don't have legs, even if you don't have arms, we can dance this body. We can allow our soul to feel the movement of this body. It's often people I work with don't feel very safe in their bodies and it makes sense but I'm here to tell you that maybe you want to consider what if, what if it was safe in this body? What if you were safe? What if you could feel safe in this body? What if you could dance merely to feel your breath and the music? And if you have feet, you feel your feet. What if? In our culture, we like to say, especially in the spiritual community I hear a lot, well, we are not our bodies. And I disagree. In this incarnation right now, we are our bodies. And a lot of us, for many reasons that all make sense, feel scared, feel fear, feel very disembodied. So beautiful practice of learning how to feel embodied and safe in your body is dancing. Maybe I'll make some dance videos for y'all <laughs> just to get inspired. But maybe this video alone will inspire you to consider dancing in your living room or maybe looking for a class that you might be able to join. Take your vulnerability and take your fear and go dance. Go see, be gentle, be curious about being embodied. That's what I do anyway. And yeah, these bodies are good bodies. We've been convinced, we've been convinced generations of women, about 500 years of generations of women have been convinced that their bodies are wrong, that their bodies are bad, that their bodies are gross and ugly. Their bodies need to be a certain way and fit into a box. Otherwise, they're not worthy. We're told that older bodies are not worthy. We're told that fatter bodies are not worthy. We're told that thinner, we, we can't win. So many people think that happiness lay at the other side of the rainbow where thinness is. And I'm here to tell you, most people get thin and realize that that is not the answer to happiness. Diet culture would like us to believe that because it's a great business model. But I'm here to tell you happiness starts with a practice right now, a practice of embodiment, a practice of <sighs> radical self-love, radical acceptance, which means sometimes I don't like this, but I always love this. I mean, this meaning body, soul, spirit, mind, interconnected to the greater universe, nature, magic. It's so important to, in my opinion, to connect 
to spirituality or even nature to remember to to be to allow our, our our beautiful bodies to remember she is a part of this collective the diversity is gorgeous and dancing is a sacred healing tool to come back to be embodied just think about it think how weird it is and how unfortunate it is that movement has been hijacked from so many of us so many thousands i i, I bet millions of women believe or humans just humans in general believe in our culture that they can't dance unless they look a certain way west africa they would laugh at that notion at least where i was in west africa what do you mean? You have a body. You have a body that's healthy. You have two feet. You have two hands. So my friends, my loves, maybe this week, I'll try dancing. Radical self-acceptance. Radical self-love. Being human can be really hard. It's not it's not our body's fault. It's not my double chin's fault that he, being human is hard. <laughs> it's not my jiggle in my belly for the reason that being human is hard. Being human is hard. But also, those moments of embodiment when we can feel safe in our bodies and come and move, when we can stand and witness the beauty of a sunset and realize that we are part of that sunset. <sighs> the witnessing of beauty. That's, what's keep, that's what keeps me going anyway. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. And oh, just one more thing. This Christmas cactus, isn't she glorious? She just started blooming this week. Thank you for your time. Happy coming, upcoming solstice, winter solstice. I will see you soon.